Hello. Uh, this is a big oil painting for a change. So it's of a ship construction bay in Deso. And because it took so long, because uh, it, oil paint takes a while to dry, so you can only do a bit at a time, really. I, I sort of did a bit of reading up and I've come up with some bits of information to sort of make it less tedious to watch, which I thought would be good. So I'll talk a little bit about Deso and these uh, fleet carrier construction bays and which are about how I'm doing it as well. So first I've, uh, I, I coated it with really, really wet paint and, and let that dry. Uh, and you can see that it, it dried quite slowly because you can see the traces of the liquid in the paint that have, that have trailed down the surface of the camera. I stood it up out the way to dry and you can see that it's a little bit... It doesn't really matter because I knew I was going to cover all this. That's just a background colour that I could then use as a, a starting point. And you've got this kind of like skyscraper thing, which actually is... Well, there's no open space, is there? So it's not really a, a skyscraper, but that's the most dominant image in terms of the colours. I'm doing the lights and darks first and in just very vague shapes and then basically spend much of the rest of the time doing this picture, just doing details. But at the moment, I'm trying to get that kind of industrial industrial cloudy pinkish hue given by those displays have led to various different colours sort of tints of different colours in in the light this part of the bottom of the picture that I'm doing here this is uh, basically uh, overlapping shadows from different spotlights that are that are shining out into space and you can't you can't really imagine the the vastness of this place like a, an enormous football stadium of a place I'm trying to I'm trying to give that sense of sense of depth at the moment that there's these ranks of lights and some are further away and some are interacting with others and it's all there to light up this enormous ship that they're building. Anyway, uh, yeah, I, I don't have a fleet carrier <laughs> and I certainly don't have a mega ship, which I know a, a very few select people do. But yeah, I don't see myself ever getting a fleet carrier either. I mean, it's not about the five billion quid. It's, it's, it's about the upkeep and actually not doing something stupid and making yourself bankrupt. I mean, I like the idea of it, but what would I use it for? I always potter around. I don't really achieve anything in game ever. That's not why I play. So uh, anyway, I was supposed to be talking to you about uh, Deso and um, the subject matter of the, the picture. So I will, um, I will. <laughs> so the first bit is about Brewer Corporation and fleet carriers. <laughs> so frankly that looking down on worlds since 3100 is the brewer corporation slogan which is kind of kind of witty and cool which is rather sweet i quite like that uh, brewer corporation has built coriolis starports and weapon platforms for the defense of outposts and surface ports and it's based in minerva and it's it's got shipyards that build the drake class fleet carrier that's your basic one you can apply like cosmetics to the fleet carriers but uh, your Drake is what you'd, you can buy in game, and it's in the process of commissioning fifty-six stations between the Bubble and Colonia, which uh, commanders are helping to do because they're taking part in uh, community goals to provide materials to make this possible. So, and this uh, this painting's a, a top-down view of a bit of one of the shipyards, basically. It's, it's going to make getting to Colonia so much easier for people because uh, that that fear of being lost in the blackness and and then hitting a planet it's it's much better for people because time was you'd, you'd hit a planet all the way out there or you'd hit a star or you'd or you'd come to some sticky end and you'd find yourself right back where you started like 10,000 light years away so it, it's good that they've got these little junctions they're like 400 light years apart so you can never go too far wrong really Anyway, uh, apart from Deso and Colonia, there's 11 other places you can see the fleet carriers being built. Apparently, 
Bay. Mm. They're at Agartha, Alcor, Ballante, and at Jackson Ring in CD-47990, you also got Elanda, Kakmbuta, you also got Elanda, Kakmbutan, Kepler Gateway in Kruger 60, Lantzak, Namnitz, and there's one at Garen Hub in Panoi, and there's one in Skegiko. Ooh, <laughs> there's some cool names. You can't land on them in a ship. They're, they're huge, uh, really impressive, I think. I think they look fantastic. They're kind of like two great big gangways either side with the central area, the central cavity where the ship is built. Um, this one is next to Shifnalpur, that's the Orbis station in Deso. As you can see, I've been messing around, uh, putting some actual colour on my picture. And that really gives it a bit more of something. I like monotone paintings, I do, with the, the subtlety of very slight suggestions of colour. But uh, I quite like also the impact of, of the punchy colour, that vivid cerise purple of the display screen for the Lacon advert that, that's there. I mean, you, I've not done that bit here yet, but... Uh, and there's, there's, uh, but it, but it, it really adds something. I'm starting to use a smaller paintbrush and, uh, and and do a bit more fine detail to try and show the different planes of the structures in the construction bay. So you've got uh, light reflecting off each other and uh, and and little bits of uh, slightly more subtle colour as well. I really like using oil paint. I've done loads and loads of oil paintings. I used to go to this oil painting portrait club where you all used to do um, lots of paintings of people. And uh, I have in my loft loads and loads of all these random nude people. And I, it's not something you can put on a wall, really, is it? So periodically I drag down a canvas and I paint over it and, and do something that's a bit more, a bit more presentable, <laughs> if you like. I enjoy, I enjoy that slowness that you've got with oil it really does continue to be workable for a few days after you've done it so you can look back at it the next day when your eyes have got used to not looking at it again and you can see the faults then and you can fix it i know i've, I've sped it all up and made it go faster but actually I, I did this over quite a long period of time just doing an hour or so here and then putting it away for a week and doing another hour or so and by far a lot longer on it than one of my normal pictures. That's why I like chalk so much because I rarely spend more than two hours on a chalk picture and then they're done. But this, uh, this this does take a while and, and, and I'm, I'm very impatient. I don't tend to spend that long on stuff. And this was quite a, a, quite an interesting thing to find out whether I did actually have the patience to sit and do something big. Because it is big, this. This is about A1. So that's, this, you know, it's, it's, it's a sizable thing. Anyway. Deso is one of the bits I was going to talk about as well. Uh, so it, it's Alliance. It's one of the old worlds. So the ones that were settled in the 25th century. And also the ones that were in the original elite. They're mostly still Alliance though. Of course, Lave isn't. The old worlds are... <laughs> Lave Listi, Deso Zeons, Riedqua, Tyanisla, Arev, Riort, Zeons, Kator, Arre and Uzar. And they're all really familiar names if you played the original game. They used uh, procedural generation to uh, name the places in the original game. So you, so you got lots of uh, systems with X's and Z's in. Uh, here's a quote from David Braben. Here we go. One of the first galaxies we tried had a system called Ars. We couldn't use the whole galaxy. We just threw it away. Which is, I, I think, rather sweet. <laughs> Deso's got the planet Birmingham, which is wonderful, I think. That's Deso 3. Uh, it's an Earth-like. It's nice to know that Birmingham is an Earth-like planet. I like the description anyway. It has a rich ecosystem with an indigenous feline species called D-lines. <laughs> they're, they're described as kind of uh, fat, round, black cats. 
Well, to be honest, if you were the top species on a planet, you probably would be quite round, wouldn't you? You'd just have uh, the lower species fetch you things, you know, some more bowls of milk, that sort of thing. I don't know. Uh, anyway, Shifnapur above Birmingham is the only place you can buy Dissomar corn. And this ancient corn-like crop is harvested manually to preserve the dust-like coating on the seeds, which is traditionally snorted by chefs. <laughs> I think that's cool. Anyway, uh, Edmund Mahan comes from Birmingham. He's uh, in charge of the alliance, so he'll have a Birmingham accent. <laughs> His family were Marcorn farmers, so you can imagine him sniffing beige dust, potentially, or being slightly covered in beige. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> When you're in Deso, outside Shifnapur, at the megaship structure, you've just got this amazing vastness to sort of make sense of. There's so many directions and it's plastered with adverts and they're all shining and changing topic. And there's ducting and cables and platforms and, and surfaces and buildings and girders and just the lights. And I feel kind of sad in a way that I wasn't able to do more of it, although that might have driven me mad. Some people do this sort of thing though, don't they? And there's holes in it, like in a CQC map. There's amazing colours shining off each other when you go up close. And that tower, that sideways tower in my picture, that's part of the fleet carrier that's being built. So that great big uh, enormous structure sort of dwarfing everything rather uh, but when you're inside it it's, it's a tiny bit of what you can see it's it's like you know it's like a Ganesha drawing or a, you know that bit in Labyrinth with David Bowie which was Ganesha drawing but you can see from the centre of it you can see the rotating hab rings of Shifnalpur as well just just a little way away and uh, it, it's so full of power and vibrant intention this thing is I think it's amazing it, it is dizzying when you're there because it's just it's just so huge and and complex that's what gives it that feeling of, of hugeness because there's so much detail the bits I've painted when I when I fly up to them uh, they resolve into detail and you realize you, you barely even captured a tiny element of it and the, the the little orange pumpkin balls that I was doing they're they're great canisters and they attached like enormous great big shipping boys to the outside of one of these gantries hanging off on all of the triangular lights that I've done with the red with the and when you go up close they've got golden lighting shining off them it, it is a really visually striking place to be the the light arrays that the the, the lighting the different shades and colors in fact when you're up there what i've drawn is a distant shot of the of quite a large area of it but when you're up close to it and you're looking at it uh oh i'm just flying through the center of one of the, the tunnels oh i love a tunnel <laughs> they're great and then and then coming out of that tunnel i've got the crescent of, of the backlit birmingham and shifnapur in the distance and it's spectacular it really is it, it's so worth a visit and actually spending a bit of time meandering round, going down like the little avenues underneath the light of the advert holograms and then bursting through the holograms until they resolve into tiny points of light different colors like an old-fashioned tv screen the contrast is so high here because of the bright shining lights that you can't really make out the stars as clearly you know they're there, but it's dazzling. It's so dazzling, the, the brightness of the adverts and the, and the surfaces. You have to get quite a distance away from it to be able to appreciate the general shape of it. This is the point where I decide whether or not I've got the patience to actually make a decent job of it in a painting. Uh, you can tell that I'm tweaking, but really at this stage I should be considering this about halfway done. But I think I'd already made my mind I wasn't wasn't going to beat myself with a stick much longer. I did enjoy it a great deal but I, I think fundamentally I am quite lazy and I like things to be done within seconds if possible. <laughs> That's why printmaking is so good because it gives instant gratification. You 
roll the ink on it and then you, you press on your paper and then you peel it off and it's done and that's what's good anyway it's done thanks for watching bye <laughs>